right, welcome back everyone after lunch uh, to a series of three um, crisp, short, lightning talks. Uh, our first speaker is Marius Vlad, uh, who, who will talk about the AGL Wayland Compositor. Take it away. Hello, hi everyone. Thanks for attending this talk. So today I'm going to talk about the AGL Compositor, which is the Wayland Compositor we're using in the AGL project. First of all, a few words about myself. I'm part of the, graphic, part of the graphics team at Colabra. Um, I work on the Western Compositor and I'm the AGL Compositor Maintainer. So I'm going to touch three points today um, about Wayland well ecosystem, try to provide some kind of sort of a common ground in terms of terminology and um, provide some kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of WIC with X um, components and uh, yeah, notions. Uh, talk about, about uh, a bit about the IVI shell and uh, well, the requirements that we have in um, IVI and on, on, in automotive. And finally, about uh, the AGL well and compositor and how we implement those requirements and um, yeah, its particularities. So Western itself, it's just a protocol, it's just a specification. It works locally over a Unix socket, whereas the Xcore protocol, well, the closest you can think of, naturally works over uh, uh, the network. Um, a server implementation of the Wayland protocol is a Wayland compositor. And you can think similar to that as a X server, which has a built-in compositing manager. We also have the notion of a shell. So this defines how the user interacts with the UI. And similar to that to X, we have this, uh, well, these big desktop environments like KDE, like GNOME. Well, these are like different types of the same desktop shell. In the Western project, we also have a desktop shell using the same, the same name. In X also, we have something called Wino managers, which is more familiar to people coming from X. So uh, multiple implementation of the same interface is, uh, well, we can think as a window manager. Now, all Wayland protocols are made of, of interfaces, and if you have like an implementation for that interface, and here's an example with Wayland shell, which is a deprecated interface in the Wayland protocol and the IFTG shell. Um, we also have something called Wayland protocols, which is a big repository of, uh, well, other Wayland protocols. Uh, the aim is to standardize different kind of operations. Two examples, big examples here are the XDDG shell, which is basically the de facto protocol for um, desktop clients, and the Linux DMA buff. Well, there are many more protocols here, rather than, but these are like the biggest ones I can, uh, well, add it here. If you're like a Wayland compositor and you like to have like this big, huge use base, you would like to implement as many protocols as you might find here. And finally, we have something called compositor private extensions. So these private extensions are locally just the compositor. Uh, in Western, for instance, we use these private extensions to implement this uh, GPU bypass and debugging and screenshotting. One thing that I would like to note here is that um, between X and Wayland, there is like a change of paradigm. So whereas in X, we basically have well, applications and uh, tools basically split into different projects. In Wayland, we try to aggregate them into a, well, common place. I'm not saying this is bad or wrong, it's just it's different and it requires to, well, um, accommodate with this idea. Right, so fast to IVI shell. So obviously in automotive industry, we have different requirements that we would have in uh, well, on the desktop, basically, we don't have any user interaction, window positioning, spanning, and dragging. And, well, UI-wise, you can think as something like a tiling window manager with a customizable, well, window placement, basically. Furthermore, we have something of policy. You would like to, well, hide or show different kind of windows and different, well, events and conditions, like when you're putting the car in reverse, you would like to show the rear uh, camera. 
Now, um, as far as I know, uh, well, IDI shield itself was, well, the specification themselves was an effort led by, uh, well, the former Geneva Alliance, now called Covisa. Itself, IDI shield is a private extension inside uh, the Western Compositor based of multiple components. Still retains the idea that we have basically different projects and processes scattered in the different places. And yeah, our clients will need to have an implementation for uh, that uh, IVI shell. Um, a component here import important in the IVI shell is a controller, basically, which acts as a window manager. It's the one that manages layouts and uh, window positioning. Any OEMs or company private entity that would like to, well, uh, make up an infotainment system with, would need to implement its own controller. In the Western project, we have one, for example, that you can use to, well, implement your own controller. It's called the HMI controller. And one thing that I've added here, all surfaces are basically identifiable using an integer number. Now, not everything is doom and gloom with IVI shell. Um, some recent efforts uh, made it so it can also display desktop clients. So clients that can run normally on the desktop would also be able to, to run on the IVI shell. And I personally seen uh, a lot of changes uh, coming in and landing into the, the, the Western project to be able to, well, improve the IVI shell um, overall. But the, the matter still remains that um, we have maintenance for multiple components and dependencies associated with it. And I believe it's still a departure from the well, well and compositor paradigm. And this is where the AGL well and compositor well steps in. And the first question that you might well pose yourself is, wouldn't it be like a bigger issue to actually write a compositor rather than just provide your own controller? But uh, well, in truthness, uh, it's far more simpler. We basically share a lot of code uh, with Western. Uh, we went th through this fitness process where we have less components and in the same time less maintenance. And um, it's customizable to an entirely different degree because you basically own the entire stack rather than just one component. Uh, just as Western, um, the AGL compository is a user of the library libwestern. So you take libwestern, you slap some startup code, and you have the Wayland compositor. Um, all the Wayland AGL and AVI functionality is provided by two extensions. Well, one now. Um, one of them is implemented its uh, HMI uh, client-side protocol. All other window management functionality happens with the help of a gRPC proxy. Um, in terms of clients, all the toolkits implement that uh, XDG shell protocol that I mentioned earlier. And for application identification, we don't use a number. We use uh, the application ID, which is a string and comes in with uh, the XDG shell protocol. Uh, this diagram shows how the uh, compositor stacks together different um, surfaces with the help of those private extensions. On the left, you would see the HMI client that if capable of managing multiple window surfaces at the same time, it can do so. Uh, on the center, you see um, multiple applications stacked together and how that happens. And on the right, you, we have like a free floating um, window that we can place on different position on a different output. Alternatively, we have um, another way of uh, letting the HMI clients uh, use their own surfaces or manage their own surfaces rather than just uh, having, uh, well, multiple um, surfaces. They can basically designate a certain area they would like to display all the other clients and uh, we have like in that private extension we have this request which allows you to customize that that's it thanks